Oh, to be young again. <laughs> okay. So again, I'm Chris Yates. I run a little company called Chris Yates Studios. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, multi-level concepts. Uh, this is my thousandth puzzle. It's called The Test. I made this about two and a half years ago. Generally, when I hit that, you know, I number all my puzzles. When you hit a nice big round number, you kind of want to challenge yourself. So I've done stacked tray puzzles before, but this is kind of an extreme example. You can see that it's actually five levels deep with five separate bases, uh, about 1,230 pieces. Um, each level has a different color combination. You can see on the sort of the top, each of the smaller remote bases sort of has an elemental color, and then the top is what I call kitchen sink, which has a little bit of the color styles from every single layer. Uh, this took us about six days to put together with a team of about three or four people working on it about every day for 12 hours. <laughs> and so now I'm going to show you some things that have all, this is all in chronological order. I'm just going to show you sort of different ways we played with uh, stacking layers, creating sort of sculpture with my puzzles. Uh, it's a piece called Depths, um, and uh, it's basically just mimicking sort of the geyser pool. I think I just went to Yellowstone a couple weeks before I did this one. And it's not quite as tricky as the test, but this one's sort of a little bit more of a subtle, elegant style, not quite as uh, every possible color in, at all times, um, which is something that sometimes I have a problem with. Um, Here's a commission that followed Depths not too long ago. Uh, it's flower mandala, just sort of taking flower designs and trying to replicate that um, in a five-level puzzle. This one's actually going to be, I just approved the design for this. You saw it on my display where you can see I have some production puzzles from Seiko. We're starting double layer puzzles coming out this fall. This is one of the initial designs. Uh, this is another piece called Lava Meter. And this one I was, one of the things about the multi-level puzzles is you sort of have to put together the lowest level first in order to access the upper levels. And this one I was actually trying to play around with giving, making the lips a little fatter. So you can actually start on all four levels um, simultaneously. So this is kind of good for group play if you've got multiple people sitting around the puzzle. Um, another thing I should mention about these is that we spent a lot of time gluing clamping things. Uh, the alignment of these has to be pretty much perfect, otherwise uh, you basically break the puzzle, you know, it doesn't work, all your work is for naught. Um, so in addition to cutting, a lot of our stuff is sort of being the human clamp and just sort of sitting there and making sure the glue doesn't skate around. Uh, this is my, I think my highest piece count puzzle is a commission called The Structure. Uh, it's eight levels deep, as you can see from the empty one here, and each layer has a different sort of color pattern that's sort of, some pieces are all, you know, whatever color, blue, and then some have the blue with a little bit of silver and gray in it, and uh, this runs around 1,500 pieces or something, which I know there's people out here who've done higher piece counts, but this, this, was a, this took me forever. Um, this one, I think, took us eight days of assembly time. Uh, fortunately, I have a lot of patient friends. Uh, this is an example, this one is uh, another four level piece, a uh, commission that was based on uh, various mandalas or Sri yantras, if anybody's into Buddhism. Um, so especially the top image was quite difficult to do, there's lots of tiny triangles, some of the smallest triangles are, are, are you know, smaller than a dime, which is generally a quarter rule, don't put anything smaller than a quarter, uh, but I broke that a lot here. And let's see, what else do we got? The volcano. This is uh, started off this winter. Uh, I've been playing around with more sort of integrating three-dimensional maps into my puzzles, sort of combining a lot of my sculptural background with uh, playable puzzles. So this is two layers of water down at the bottom, and then there's actually four levels of lava at the top. So for the size of this, the piece count's not crazy. It's only about 220 pieces, but uh, it's a quite a striking piece. I actually was going to bring this, but I just did not have room in my bags. But if anybody wants it, it's available. Everything else is sold. Uh, and then immediately after that, I was like, this is cool. I really like making these sort of landscape pieces. But wouldn't it be interesting if you could see all the different levels? Uh, so these are obviously two separate puzzles. I've got one sort of similar to the right one over on my table there you can check out. Um, these are basically, I just call them stepped waterfalls. Um, 
And basically this is achieved by cutting away half of what would comprise the base tray for each layer. So I'm sort of you know, cutting out the piece mass for each section, and then I'm sort of cutting those, these lines here and just sort of throwing away the, the little bit that's connected to it, which was a kind of scary at first, but uh, they seem to have worked out. I've also made some models like these that are triple waterfalls, waterfalls with whirlpools cut into them. The technique, uh, the next technique I'm going to show you. Oh, this is something different. Uh, this is a uh, igneous spindle, similar colors to what I use for the cutters exchange here. I like a sort of fire gradient going from deep purples to sort of orangey reds or orangey yellows. Um, the, what I was trying to do here is eliminate the outer base entirely. So at first I was kind of worried it would look like one of those dumb kids' toys that was a stack of donuts. Um, but hopefully it's a little bit more elegant than that. Uh, if you go to the Wikipedia page for jigsaw puzzles, this actually is on it. Not my doing, um, but it's a kind of nice thing. Uh, so this is also another very tricky thing to glue up, is if you don't get the center uh, bits aligned quite right, all the circles will be wonky and, again, we go in the garbage, but we're pretty patient. And then we said, hey, what if we put holes in every piece? Um, so this was, I mean, several experiments. This is sort of a coral design. Um, the pieces obviously have to be somewhat oversized so that the windows are large enough to actually see down to the uh, five different levels. Uh, I've got some different iterations of this on my website, ones that are also more geometric with triangles and polygons and things that have whole, you know, the cutouts in each piece are basically mimic the outer edge of the pieces. With this, I'm just sort of having fun and just sort of making it up as I go. So that's the coral cavern. I think I got one more for you. Uh, this one's actually over on my table here. I made this about a month ago. It's called a Drop of Water. There's a, a sister piece called Drop of Fire. And here, we're sort of taking the whole concept, but uh, making it a little bit more planned out to begin with, and just sort of a central whirlpool effect that goes through all four layers so that you can, you can uh, have fun putting it together. But when it's finished, you can also sort of, you know, have a little bit of insight into, the, oh, yes, it's actually four levels deep, and creates a little, you know, sculptural effect. And also, it's about the perfect size for a grapefruit. So if you need to put your grapefruit somewhere, you can just put it in that little indentation. <laughs> Very expensive grapefruit roller. Um, and that basically leads me to uh, my, uh, my cutters exchange puzzles, which are somewhat smaller versions of this with a symmetric hole hole cut down through the center. Um, so a little bit of what I do is just, um, I'm really interested in multiples. Like with the jigsaw puzzles, you never really, I'm never really feeling like I'm making my masterpiece. I'm just making another puzzle today. Even if it's one of the most complicated things I've ever done, I'm always going to finish it at one point and I start another thing. And so what I'm trying to show you with this, you know, the quick uh, run of slides is that each piece feeds the next one. And it gives me questions and it gives me like, how can I make this better? What if I did it this way? And that way I'm sort of never afraid to fail because it's just like, whatever, you just toss it, it doesn't work and you start over. Um, and that's the real joy for me with puzzles um, is that not only am I exploring this kind of stuff, but that every piece you make is sort of an active thing. You know, we can always be played with. You know, we have all these antique puzzles around here that were made by people who are not even around anymore. But those puzzles still live because it's art that you can feel. You're encouraged to pick it up, to play with it, to use it to connect with other people. And I've done a lot of other, you know, art forms and sculptural things out there. And I think jigsaw puzzles is just something that's, it's, it's almost indescribable um, how interested it makes me in just getting up every day and making things in my wood shop. So that's sort of what I do and uh, you know, if you've got any questions you can talk to me later and we'll keep the show moving. <laughs>